What's going on you gamers? Today we're back with some more Outriders World Slayer. What I'll be covering today is the four gear sets that we know are going to be released with this DLC, one for each of the classes and what I think they bring to the table and just how good they are. So if that interests you, stay tuned. That's coming up next. Welcome back all you guys and girls as always, for Things Gaming, for Things Xbox, then why not hit that subscribe and bell icon. I'll bring you all the latest and greatest content, hints, tips, guides and builds, and just some fun game plan reviews for upcoming games. But for today we're here to go over what we already know for the gear sets that they've shown us over on Twitter, the People Can Fly have kind of released snippets of these legendary gear sets, so let's take a little look at them. So jumping over to our first one, and this is just a really cool looking one for the Technomancer, and that's the Flame Leper. This gives a very kind of, I want to say Pharaoh or Egyptian vibe, but obviously it's sticking with that true nature of the Toxic. And the set bonus for this inflicts Toxic on enemy three times, transforms the status into Blightfire, which deals more damage over time. Very much a change up with this before. The Technomancer was all about inflicting very heavy damage with its bullets. This one's a damage over time effect, so it'll be fun to see how this one plays out. So jumping straight over, and we're looking at Val of the Flame Leper. It's tier 3 mod, focused discharge, the turret discharges anomaly beams that deal, I'm not going to say how much damage they'll do because these are probably placeholders, that looks way too much to me, but it says 722,484 damage every 0.3 seconds. These numbers will change definitely at launch I would imagine, and it says at up to 5 enemies within a 5 meter radius. That's going to make turret builds absolutely amazing and just be a lot of fun to use. Radical Therapy, pretty much a no brainer, deals 15% extra damage against enemies afflicted by Toxic. And another one looks awesome, and that's Breathe In. Reduces the skill's cooldown by 20% on our Fixing Wave, and applies weakness to enemies in a 10 meter radius. Looks like they're trying to make Fixing Wave worth using there, whereas before it was left out of a lot of the actual builds. Going to Robes of the Flame Leper, and we've got Party Starter. The strength of the skill is increased by 8% for each enemy within the arena, up to 100%. If you're looking for a designated healer, this set looks like it's going to have you covered with that and that looks like Fixing Wave will definitely help you out and it's obviously going to do the weakness as it goes. Spare Mag, the skill was effective for one additional magazine before triggering the cooldown. And another of the tier 3 is Alchemical Mastery. While the skill is active, receive a weapon damage or anomaly power bonus equal to 30% of your status power based on whichever is higher. That's really cool, it gives you a lot of kind of wiggle room with your build, I really like that one a lot, and 30% is pretty high. Next up we've got the lower armour and it's Wastecloth of the, of the Flame Leper. Virulent Compound is going to be the tier 3 we kick it off with, and that deals 15% more damage to elites afflicted by Toxic or Blight Fire. Afflicted enemies explode when killed, dealing, like I said the numbers will change, but a lot of damage and spreading the status to other enemies within a 5 meter radius. Cleansing Wind, again we're going for that healing, activating the skill removes negative statuses from you and your allies and grants 3 seconds of immunity. And Face Melter, the turret reduces the resistance of each enemy hit by 30% and lasts for 5 seconds. Going over to the gloves and we've got Gauntlets of the Flame Leper. License to heal is our tier 3, activate the skill, grants a 10% weapon damage bonus and 4 seconds of infinite ammo. That's pretty cool, nice infinite ammo, can really really help out and probably means you could choose a few more weapons to use with this build. Rapid reaction reduces the skill's cooldown by 50% for your blighted rounds and toxic lead a really good one to have on any technomancer and as killing shots on enemies afflicted with your toxic replenishes 40% of your ammo in your magazine. Lastly, we're going over Boots of the Flame Leper. This one, it's tier 3, is Bad Medicine. Overheal players inflict Toxic and deal an amount of damage for every percentage of overheal in a 10 meter radius. That one's quite interesting and it's very much a team build disc now, I can see. Toxic Piercer, the effectiveness of Toxic is increased by 10% and the bonus is equal to 100% of your resistance piercing. This means you might have to go a specific skill tree route, but this can definitely work and will make you hit really hard. And Aura of Force. Critical shots grant a certain amount of anomaly power to you and your allies for 5 seconds. Very much a gear set based around team play. This looks like it could be a lot of fun and you'll definitely be great in any team, especially if that end game is very, very difficult. Now we're going to have a little look and see it in action.
So up next and we've got the Devastators gear set and this one's called the Concussioner. This looks absolutely awesome. It kind of gives me the kind of crossbones Marvel look with a bit of Vagabond going on about it. But its actual gear set spawn a golem clone that jumps towards your nearest enemy and deals 300% melee skill damage within a 3 meter radius. Violently shock your enemies in style. That just sounds awesome and if you're about defeating your enemies by punching them to bits, this looks like the set for you. So going over the actual gear set pieces and we have the concussioner's helmet. The tier 3 for this is claws, inflicts vulnerable on all enemies hit with your melee skill. That's going to help you dish out an extra bit of damage and I'm guessing it affects the clone as well meaning that you're going to do an absolute abundance in that 3 meter area effect. Auto reflect, you can now fight while the skill is active but you cannot manually deactivate it. This is just a really really cool mod to have on but I must admit it wasn't used much in the base game because a lot of times I felt it was a little bit underwhelming. Hopefully this gear set sorts that out. And with Ash and Boost, boost your damage against enemies afflicted with Ash by 20%, again giving us a bit of extra damage. Jumping over to the Concussioner's chest plate for the upper armour and its tier 3 mod is False Feedback. Upon contact, the barrier inflicts a set amount of damage that is increased for every enemy in close range, up to 10 times. That right there is a game changer, absolute game changer and this, I, it's one of the gear sets I'm after now because I think that's going to be an amazing feature. You're not going to have to worry about the bullets quite as much because you're just going to want to be in people's faces and doing an abundance of damage with your melee and also with the false feedback. That looks really cool. Perseverance increased the skill's duration by 50%. That's going to help our golem armor be up a lot more often and give us a bit of leeway with the old damage. And another tier 3 mod is Rockfall. Skill throws a debris bomb at a direction of a random enemy every 5 seconds, dealing a set amount of damage and every enemy hit by the debris bomb fragment receives 30% more melee damage for 3 seconds. That is just ridiculous, that means it's really going to help you stack up and again this is making skills that weren't really used that often such as the golem armor and the reflect bullets now actually worth putting into your build. That's really going to help to change things up a bit. Next over for the lower armor we've got the concussioner's leg plates. The tier 3 mod is the equator. Damage blocked by the skill is released as a damaging anomaly disc that rotates around the player. The damage dealt is increased dependent on the amount of damage blocked by the skill. Honestly this devastator now sounds insane and it's probably one of the main classes I want to play. Just get in the thick of things, have an absolute abundance of damage with your melee, close combat skills going off and a lot of these are going to work in your favour with some crazy effects going off at the same time. Hand in hand with this the tier 2 Perseverance Fists. Whenever your health drops below 30% increase your melee damage by 300%. That means even if you do drop down low you're just going to be able to nuke through whatever's in front of you hopefully because you're going to hit them that hard. Another tier 2 what goes around incoming bullets have 30% chance of being deflected towards an enemy dealing a set amount of damage again. Jumping over to the concussioner's gauntlets for the gloves and we've got concussive force. The tier 2 is your melee skill deals 25% more damage in a 100% bigger range. That's really nice and like I said this builds all about being up close and personal so that's going to work perfect in it. Alongside the tier 3 mod which is martial arts. Reduces the cooldown of your melee skill by 50%. Just underneath that and we've got Reload Shield. When a shield is active, reloading grants you 108,614 points of shield for 5 seconds. Like I said, don't worry too much about the numbers and such, a lot of them will be placeholders, but you are going to grab yourself some shield whenever you're reloading, which will really help you out to stay in battles. Lastly, and we're going over to the foot gear with the Concussioner's Boots. Chip off the old block is the tier 3, while the skill is active, with your Golem armor using a melee skill, while sprinting creates a golem clone that jumps towards the nearest enemy and deals 300% of the melee skill damage within a 3 meter radius. This looks awesome when you see it and there's just a lot of effects going off with the devastators now. Really good to see, they've kind of reinvigorated it a bit I think. Tier 3 boosts your melee skill damage by 100% with brawl, definitely something you're going to want on this build because you're going to be dishing out so much close range damage. And last but not least, stare into the barrel, another tier 3, boosts your firepower by a set amount for each enemy in close range and stacks up to 4 times. This set is definitely one of the ones I'm looking forward to using and acquiring, 
So let's have a little look at some footage, see what it's all about. So next up and we have the Pyromancer. I'm probably going to be a little bit biased with this because Pyro has been my main since the start of this game and I just love everything about them. This one has the Scorched Zealot set. Set bonus, melee skill fires a projectile that explodes upon impact, dealing a set amount of damage and inflicting ash to enemies within a 5 meter radius. The damage of the projectiles increases by 25% for each enemy hit with Feed the Flames, up to 100% bonus is spent on the next melee skill used. Not only does this look awesome, it kind of gives me an Ultron vibe about it with the looks, but I think the damage it dishes out is going to be ridiculous. It's definitely something I'm looking forward to playing with. If we go over to the gear set pieces, the Scorch Zealot's Crown has the tier 3 mod Ash and Bloom. Enemies affected by the skill explode, dealing a set amount of damage and inflicting ash to the targets within a 5 meter radius. Again, they're trying to make some of the weaker skills involved do a lot more damage. That one's obviously Feed the Flames, it's not going to be there just for a heal now, it's going to be doing something integral to your build. Just underneath that, and we've got Ride the Wave. The skill can be activated one more time before triggering the cooldown of your heat waves. Underneath that, and we've got True Blast. Increases the explosive damage by a set amount for your thermal bombs. That to me is a really interesting piece of armor because it's putting together three skills that weren't commonly associated in the original Outriders, so it'd be nice to see how that works. Just over to the upper armor, and we've got Scorched Zealot's Cuirass. The tier 3 mod is Molten Lead. Your heat wave leaves an anomaly aura behind for 10 seconds that increases weapon damage by 20% when standing in it. Bonus does not stack, meaning you're just going to get a flat 20% increase. This is really nice, it's not game breaking in any way, but I can see this gear set being a lot about putting everything together as one, like your melee, to launch that special move and to dish out a lot of damage with your firepower. Ash and Boost boosts your damage against enemies afflicted with ash by 20%. We know we're going to have a lot of ash going on in this build, so again that's going to be a 20% on top of the other 20% we've just got from Molten Lead. And underneath that is Fire Frenzy. This tier 1 mod, the skill can be activated one more time before triggering the cooldown. Just over to our Scorch Zealot's Wastecloth, so our lower armour, and the tier 3 mod, Cauterizing Flames. Every percent of overheal gained through the skill grants a 1% fire bonus for 5 seconds, up to 50%. This is really interesting, 50% extra damage is definitely nothing to turn your nose up at and it could really make those guns hit crazy hard whereas before the pyromancers weren't really known too much for their firepower with their weapons. Just underneath that is burnt out, damaged enemies take 15% more damage for 8 seconds stacking up to 2 times. Underneath that and we've got power from the ashes, successful shots on enemies afflicted with ash increase your anomaly power by a set amount for 6 seconds and stacks up to 4 times. Another interesting one, it seems like it's not heading in one complete direction with this build and, it's, and instead it's trying to make it a little bit well rounded. Just over to the gloves, the Scorch Zealot's hands and the tier 3 for that is Voracious Flames. Enemies below 50% health receive 50% more damage from the skill Feed the Flames. Just underneath that and we've got Ash Cleaner, critical shots apply a certain amount of damage to enemies afflicted with ash. And again finally we've got Final Breath, reduces the skills cooldown by 50% for your Feed the Flames. You're definitely going to have a lot of Feed the Flames going off with this build as it seems that's going to be the main skill you're probably going to be dishing out at all times. Keeping yourself alive, making sure things are ashed and doing a lot of damage because of it. Lastly we've got the Scorch Zealot's Feet. The tier 3 mod for this is Scorched Earth. After skill ends the wave returns dealing a set amount of damage and inflicting burn to the enemies in its path. That's cool, it means it's going to go out there and come back by the sounds of it, doing a kind of return effect. That's quite awesome to see, meaning you're going to double tap pretty much everything in its path. Bullet absorption underneath that replenishes 40% of your ammo in your magazine for every enemy affected by the skill. And last but not least, the tier 3 is Flame Grasper, enable absorption of two additional targets. 
This looks like an awesome set to use. I've yet to see how it works, but it looks quite well rounded. There's going to be a lot of healing going on, a lot of damage close to medium range, as well as having a lot of firepower to dish out. So again, let's have a little look and see how it is in action. So the last set we'll be looking at today is the one they've announced for the Trickstar, and that's right here, the Shield Beast. Set bonus, every percentage of shield increases anomaly power by 1%. This guy is going to be a crazy devastating force, something to be reckoned with, and because of his shield, I'd imagine he's going to be quite tanky and survivable as well. Also, look at him on the left there, he just looks awesome. Diving into his gear set pieces and we're starting off with the Shield Beast Helmet. The tier 1 mod is going to be Strong Twist, while the skill is active increases weapons firepower by an additional 15%. Just down from there and we have Body Cam. When the skill ends the next twisted round's cooldown is reduced by 10% for each enemy killed during its activation up to 90%. This, that's quite insane, that really is, it means you're not going to have to worry about the cooldown because you're going to be able to get that back very, very quickly. If you're good enough at destroying enemies, if you're able to bop around and just take things out with a lot of damage from your firepower or whatever you're doing, then you're going to be able to have 90% cooldown on your twisted rounds. So you're going to have this up almost constantly, which is going to be a massive uptime to your damage. The last one on the headpiece is Aurora Force. Critical shots grants a certain amount of anomaly power to you and your allies for 5 seconds. Really nice, means you're going to be working well in a team and you can have a bit of extra anomaly power for yourself as well. Just over to the upper armour and we've got Shield Beast Vest. The tier 1 mod is going to be additional mag. The skill is effective for 2 magazines before triggering the cooldown. This with body count, you're going to be shooting those weapons almost constantly with your twisted rounds up and even if it does go down, you'll be able to get it back very very fast. The tier 3 mod underneath is Skull Piercer. While the skill is active, critical damage is increased with every critical shot, up to 20% bonus and resets when the skill ends. I'm guessing this is going to be a flat 20% bonus guaranteed near enough with this build because of how much you're going to be able to shoot. Under that we've got Perseverance Shield. Receive a set amount of points of shield whenever your health drops below 30% with a 5 second cooldown. We already know this build's all about shields so that's going to be massive and can really help you out with your extra anomaly power. Moving over to the Shield Beast Trousers and we've got Eager Edges. Adds two more bounces during the ricochet path to your Venator's Knife. Just down from there and a tier 3 is Trophy. Successful shots on enemies marked by the knife make them drop energy orbs that grant shield. Again you're going to be getting even more shield, stacking up your anomaly damage. And just down from here Shield Blast. A complete shield depletion triggers a powerful energy blast, dealing a set amount of damage to enemies within a 5 meter radius. This build looks pretty awesome, I'm not going to lie, you're going to be doing a lot of damage, you're going to have a shield almost constantly, whilst you have an uptime of twisted rounds, and even if that does go down with your shield, looks like you can be able to give them a nice little energy blast as a send off and then try and make your way out of there before you get your shield back. Just over to the next piece and we've got Shield Beast Gloves. Anomaly cut, shots on enemies marked by the knife receive an extra amount of anomaly damage. Tier 3 under that, cut them deep. Elites marked by the knife receive 50% more damage. 50% is huge, that is massive, that right there is a mod you're definitely going to want to keep on and it looks like it will definitely be something you'll be adding to those elites and bosses in order to completely nuke them. Just under that and we've got Twisted Fate. Receives 15% critical damage bonus while the skill is active. You already know that you're going to have that active most of the time. 15% crit damage on top of the 20 we had earlier on means this guy is going to be an absolute gun toting beast, especially after he's marked them with the Venator's knife. Lastly, going over to the Shield Beast foot gear, and we've got Sharpening. Increases the skill's damage by a set of man on your Venator's knife. Underneath that, Hive Cut. Damaging an enemy marked by the skill also activates the effect on other marked targets within a 6 meter radius. 
dealing 50% of the initial damage. That right there has just changed the whole build. This guy has gone from probably an absolute elite single target destroyer to now being able to dish out, <laughs> to dish out massive damage to anything that's around that as well. This will be a lot of fun to see, especially if we get some crazy new weapons, because he may be able to make pretty much everything explode, depending on how much damage he can do with those initial shots. And lastly, Anomalic Calibre. Receive 30% resistance piercing bonus while the skill is active. Icing on the cake means you're going to hit for even harder, and everyone who's tricks the main will probably really want to try and grab this set. Again, let's jump into a little bit of gameplay just to see what it's about. Royal Hugh Gamers, obviously that's the only sets we know about currently, but there's going to be a lot more when it does come out for the World Slayer DLC, it's just around the corner, I'm definitely looking forward to it, let me know in the comments what you guys and girls think. As always, Full Things Gaming, Full Things Xbox, take care, I'll see you all next day.